Hi guys, I have prepared this tutorial for users that are using AutoCAD for the first time. So if this is your case, welcome to my lessons. I hope you will learn something here and especially gain motivation to start working in AutoCAD. As you may notice, this version is AutoCAD 2013. However, if you have another version, this will not be a problem. Because even different versions can change a bit the layout, or the newest ones have more features, all the basic and main things are mostly the same. For example, if you can work in AutoCAD 2005, it will not be too difficult to get used to AutoCAD 2016 or 17, for example. And this is because a special characteristic of AutoCAD is that we can start any action by typing the command name with the keyword. For example, if I want to draw a line, I can type line and this will activate a command. Moment. If I type options, I will open the panel of options. So, it's very simple. If I hold my mouse pointer over any icon, it appears there a small box with a briefly explanation of this tool, in this case it's the multi-line text, and this word below is the command name. So if I know it, I can activate this action by inserting the name with the keyword. So the name of the commands are the same for all versions. Of course, it's possible that exists any exception, and also some of them have been experiencing improvements all over the time. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about a workspace and how I can use the mouse and its buttons. It's possible that it seems a bit confusing at the beginning, but don't worry because you will get used easily. This cross is our mouse indicator and it has exactly this shape when we don't have any command active. So, the most common way to go to different sections of the drawing is using the mouse wheel. If I scroll up, I can zoom in, and if I scroll down, I zoom out. To move the workspace, just click and hold the wheel and slide it. If you are familiar with Google Maps, this works as the same way, so it will be easy for you. If you click anywhere with the right button, this will open this panel. Here there are several options that you can choose. The left button is used for selection. If I want to select from the left to the right, the select area will appear as blue. And I have to cover all my line. If I just cover a part, it will not be selected as you can see here. But if I open the selection from the right to the left, the selection area will be in green. And if I just touch the line, it will be selected. For cancel the selection, just click on ESC. Now, I will start teaching you to draw in AutoCAD. And for that, I will introduce you the command line. This is the most basic tool and will be probably the one you will use most of the time. To draw a line, I can go to the home panel on the top and click on the icon line with the left button. Another option is typing line with the keyboard and click enter. If you look to the command bar, you can see that I have the command line active. Also, the mouse indicator has changed. Now, it doesn't have the square in the middle. That appears in this form when I use any drawing tools. You can find them in this panel. To start drawing, I can just click somewhere here to enter the first point and click again where I want the second point, for example, here. 
Now I can enter a second line, but I can click ask to cancel the comment. OK, so we have drawn a line. However, it was without any specific dimension and direction, and this is not going to be useful for us. I want to show you how to insert a horizontal line with dimension 1000. For now, the units doesn't matter, I will show you how to edit them later. Ok, so if I type enter now, I activate the command line again. This is because it was the last command I have been using, and it's very useful for repeatedly actions. So, I click to insert the first point, and I'm going to drag to the right. Now, here appear this dashed green line, and saying here polar. This means that my line will be horizontal. Now I will type 1000 and click enter. Now this line is completely horizontal and specified as 1000. To be possible to draw completely horizontal or vertical lines, we need the polar mode on. Now I will deactivate it which is here at the bottom, to show you what will happen. I will draw another line now, and as you see, the dashed line is not there. And even if I try to draw it as horizontal as possible, it will be for sure a little bit out of the place. For this reason, I strongly recommend you to have the polar mode on if you need to draw lots of horizontal and vertical lines. To draw on the orthogonal lines, I can switch on the ortho mode, which is this button next to the polar mode. Drawing a line again. So I click for my first point. And the cursor only lets me to draw a vertical or a horizontal line. So I will type now 100. Now 200 and I will continue drawing. This will be 100. Now I will draw another line. I can draw how many lines as I want. When I finish, I simply click ESC. This last one, I have to make it 100 to match the line below. So, the last thing I will teach you about the command line is to draw a line with a specified angle. I will draw first an horizontal line. And now the next one, I want to draw it with length 200. And now, if I type the button tab, I can specify the angle that I want. And I will put, for example, 30 degrees and click enter to place it. So, in this next section, I will explain you how to set up and edit units. Now, one thing I recommend is drawing with scale 1 per 1. I mean, if you want to draw a line with 1 meter of length, draw it with the real length and not with 1 centimeter, for example. That's because it's easier to not get confused and you only need to scale the drawing when you will plot it. Now, if you look to the bottom left corner, you can see the coordinates of the mouse pointer. And of course, the first one is X, the second Y, and the third one is Z, and this is always zero because we are working in 2D. Also this point is where my coordinates are all zero. Now, I am going to set up my units. I will type units and press enter. 
to open this panel. Here where it says length, I can choose the type that I want. In my case I use decimal units, but I know in some countries it's common to use the architectural or engineering units. In the precision you have all these options to choose. And in this side you can choose the type of angle units. I will choose decimal degrees. Now in the insertion scale we will choose the units that we want. If you use standard units, but those are just used for conversion when we want to insert a block or an external image. Just for drawing, the units don't matter. That's because AutoCAD has a dimensionless system of measurement. We only need to put a scale when to print. Now I want to show you a common issue, especially when we are using millimeters, is that we notice that our workspace is not very wide. But this is simple to solve. If I draw a very large line, like for example 100,000 millimeters, of course it will not fit in the drawing, but I'm going to type Z for zoom, I press enter, and now I type A for all. And as you see, my workspace is much larger now. In this part, I will show you a very basic tool that will help us to draw with precision. It's the object snap. In the screen, you can see these lines that you may know how to draw if you have followed these tutorials from the beginning. So I'm going to activate the command line and if I drag the pointer through the lines, you can see these green symbols appearing there. These points are from the object snap and they help me to draw with precision. For example, this square indicates an endpoint of one of the lines. If I click here, the start point of the new line will be precisely from the corner. Now, I will show you what happens when I have the object snap off. So I will try to draw a line from this corner. And now if I zoom in, you can see that there is a gap. These things can make your drafting unprecise and for large projects, the objects may not match. Now I am going to show you how to choose the object snap points. We have to type O snap to open the settings. Here I can activate the modes that I need. In this tutorial I will show you how to use some of them. I will start with the endpoint. As I showed you before, it appears in the extremities of the lines and arcs. The midpoint is useful when you want to draw from the middle of an object. The center only applies for circles and ellipses. And to detect this point, you have to touch the border of the circle without clicking. For the ellipse, is the same. The intersection is obviously when you want to detect the point of intersection of two lines. The extension appears, for example, when you click on an endpoint and you drag the pointer in the same direction of your line. Now the perpendicular. This is a little bit tricky. I'm going to draw a line from here and now I have to touch the line that I want to assume as my reference. I drag the mouse to find the perpendicular line. So here it is. I can just type the length to draw it. Now. I want to draw a line from the same point to the perpendicular intersection of this line I highlight here. When I drag the new line towards the line I highlighted, I find this sign that indicates the perpendicular point of my future intersection. I click there and I have my new line orthogonal with this another. Parallel mode. If you want to draw a parallel line, 
just click here for example drag the mouse over the line I want to make it parallel to detect it okay one last thing I want to explain in this video is the object snap tracking this is really useful if I want to put the first point of a new line at 50 millimeters to the right from another I will touch the end point of my line and drag slowly to the right I will type 50 to insert the first point of the new line so here it is of course I can do the same to another direction now I will show you to the left side this time I will insert the distance of 100 and I can draw this line here one last thing about the object snap I recommend you to only activate the modes you are going to use in the project because if you activate everything this can be a bit confusing sometimes with the green signs appearing everywhere how does the other drawing tools work? if you go to the drawing section on the top you can find there a lot of comments and there are some more if you click here as this is a tutorial for beginners I will only show you how to use some of them polylines, rectangles, circles and arcs I think these are the most used and enough for beginners in AutoCAD now I will show you how to use the command polyline a polyline is basically a group of lines all connected to each other ok so to draw a polyline we can click in this button or we can also type with the keyboard polyline or simply PL and click enter as you can see this is the same process of drawing lines I'm drawing as much lines as I need and when I finish I can click ESC or if I want to join with the first point of the polyline I can click CL that means close so the main characteristic when I draw a polyline is that I select all these lines together because they are considered only one object if I want to draw a rectangle I can still use polyline but if I click in a command rectangle it is easier that's because first I click to insert the start point and then I only need to insert the coordinates of the opposite corner for example if I want a rectangle with 300 per 500 first I will type 300 then I press tab and finally 500 so as you see for rectangles it's faster doing this way now I will show you how to draw a circle you can click in this icon here or I can type circle or C it's very simple first I click to insert the center for example here and now I will insert the radius of the circle for example 250 and click enter so it's done now if you go to the drawing panel and click in this arrow you can choose the way how you want to insert the circle for example you can choose first the center and insert the diameter you can draw a circle by inserting two or three points or also by putting tangents so if you want you can, you can play around with this because it's easy to learn if I want to draw an arc I can click on the icon above or I can simply type A with the keyboard I click to insert the first point now I will put the second point and now the third point at the beginning it may be a little bit difficult to draw an arc but with practice you'll get used to it also like the circle if you click in the arrow you can choose the points that you want to insert for drawing the arc as you see you have here several options okay now that you know how to use these commands you can play around with them and also discover the other drawing tools so it's all in this video don't forget to subscribe 
if you want to watch the complete list of tutorials. Well, thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you soon.